Hey everyone, how are we doing today? This is James Sweeney, aka Split Suit. Welcome back to another video. And as part of the Ask Split Suit a Question series, a bunch of people ask hand history questions, and today's question comes from Evan. And Evan just wants me to review this hand played with Pocket Kings. So let's check it out. Okay, so this is played at 1 2. There's a, an open limb from the main villain, and Hero decides to isolate to 12. Couple quick notes. First and foremost, always make sure you top off. Definitely want to make sure that you have the most amount of money where you're going to have the most amount of flexibility going post flop, and you're going to be able to usually interject your edge the absolute most over your opponent. So definitely make sure you top off. And yes, I know you look around the table and you see a bunch of $80 stacks, but that just means that when Hero was turning this into a hand history, that he just didn't change their stack size, as I highly doubt everyone had 80 bucks. And then the other thing is that Villain, Hero's been playing with him for quite some time, about three hours up to this point and notes that Villain is very, very loose, seeing about 80% of flops. So if that's the case, obviously I love the fact that we're raising, my only gripe is with the size. I think you can probably make this larger. If this is the kind of opponent who just desperately needs to see flops, it means you can put more money in here and still expect him to call. So going to something like $15 to $20 is going to be significantly better. Yes, if you come from an online background, you may look at that and be like, what the heck, that is a huge, huge size. But in live games, it's actually more common to have very, very large preflop raises, so it's actually not out of the norm if you are in a live environment. So again, bigger is going to be better here. We end up getting called by villain, not shocking. Go here, check. Here decides to bet 18 and ends up facing a check shove. So backing up just a couple of quick ticks, I like the fact that we're betting here, I just like to see a larger size. Yes, I know this is two thirds and yes, that's normal, but we're playing against a very specific kind of opponent, one who's going to make a lot of mistakes post-flop and I think he's going to overvalue a lot of things and that just means maximum inelasticity, which means when I have a huge hand, I'm going significantly larger. It's not like I have to be balanced, I can just go huge in my big hands and watch them make a tremendous amount of continuance mistakes. So I'd really like to see this be probably honestly like 25 bucks go forward from there. And once we face the shove, there's really not too much of a question. I'm definitely going to be calling here. We're getting 1.5 to 1, which means we need 40% equity to break. You know, plugging this into Equilab, we have our hand, we have the board. If we plug in even like a decent range of hands, let's say eights, let's say sixes, let's say realistically things that have a king with a heart, let's just say this. And again, this is probably actually a little bit kind but we're give it nonetheless anything with a heart good and then let's also give like asex stuff that has a heart on it so we'll go those we even go nut hearts as well let's just say ace jack to that do a suit selection anything with a heart anything suited in hearts good to go and then let's also assign things like oop, Got to do another suit selection. Let's just give them these kind of things. And yes, this is liberal giving someone something like 5-3 suited. But if this is the kind of person who's seen a lot of flops, then obviously they can have these kind of things much more liberally. And we're just assign that. Do a suit selection. Again, anything in hearts. Go to OK, evaluate it, and notice that we are just absolutely crushing. So yes, sometimes we're going to run into hearts, and sometimes we're going to run into situations where he has high equity with the A's of hearts. But it just simply is what it is. You pile it in with a smile, you hope you win, and unfortunately in this situation we don't. But again, we don't want to be results oriented. We want to be focused on the math part of it, which is what that equity is all about. And then we also want to be very, very focused on making sure that our bet sizing is extremely solid against these kind of players. That means larger preflop, that means larger on the flop. And of course, once you face the check shove, get it in with a smile. So Evan, thank you very much for this great hand. And if you or anyone else has a poker related hand or question, feel free to send it to me directly at splitsuit.com slash send. And of course, if you have any comments or questions, please don't hesitate to let me know. Otherwise, we'll see you back next week with a brand new video. And in the meantime, good luck out there and happy grinding.